Okay, once again, welcome everyone. All right, uh, I have Big Day here connecting from Lagos, John Himika. I have Daniel Samuel Oluwa Dami Lola, who is an aspiring web developer connecting from Ibadan. I have oh, my very own Dr. Mrs. Uh, Phoebe Amaka, that's connecting from my new room. Yeah, we have John Himika here, who is a farmer connecting from Abuja. Awesome to have you here too. Uh, and, uh, and I'm sure that it's also going to be a very, very great learning point. As okay, once again, how, welcome everyone. Uh, All right, uh, I have a big yeah, day here connecting from Lagos. Right. I know John Emika, very great. I'm Daniel Samuel, who are Dami Lola, who is an inspiring way to get up now. We should have, 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 have our oh, very own guest, Dr. Mrs. Phoebe Amaka, that's connecting from my new room. Yeah, right. Why I'm John Emika here, who is a farmer connecting from Abuja. Awesome to have you here too. And, uh, and I'm sure that it's also going to be a very Why that comes up, point. Uh, kind okay, once again, welcome, welcome everyone. Uh, All you right, you're uh, welcome. Uh, Big day here, so nice having you here today. Kind of John, 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 very great. I'm Daniel, Samuel, where you are today. Dami, Lola, who is going to be trying to get up on now. I'm very excited to have you here. I'm sure that Phoebe Amaka is going to be here. Yeah, right. Why I'm John, you make her Who is a farmer connecting from Abuja. Awesome to have you here too. And, okay, I, uh, and I'm sure you. that it's also going to be a very Why that comes up? Point. Uh, okay, once again, welcome everyone. All right, you're welcome. Thank you for having me here today. Thank you, John. 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 And, okay, I, uh, and I'm sure you. that it's okay. that comes up. Point. Um, okay, once again, welcome everyone. Uh, all right, you're uh, 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 yeah, yeah, welcome. Nice to have you here today. Right. 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 Kind of John, 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 and, okay, I, uh, and I'm sure that it's that comes up. Point. Um, kind of okay, once again, welcome, welcome everyone. Uh, all right, uh, you're welcome. Uh, Big day here, nice to have you here today. Right. Right. Kind of John, 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 All right, everyone, I hope uh, we don't have a background uh, noise from the second device here again. All right, uh, welcome for those people who are just joining. You are very welcome to the meeting. We are starting very, very soon. Uh, currently trying to ensure that we are live on all our channels here. Uh, for those who have just joined, kindly introduce yourself. Tell us your name. If you have not introduced yourself, tell us your name. Tell us where you're connecting from. And then you can also tell us what you do. That would be great. I should be also awesome knowing you too. All right. Um, while that happens, can you use the chat section? Uh, we've had from, um, okay, I have Oyema Ferre here from Akwaibon, Olumide Ogumbanjo from Ibadan. Okay. I hope we are not hearing double voice again. Uh, kindly confirm that um, the audio now is, um, is perfect and that we, don't, we are not hearing double voice again. Kindly confirm that um, the audio is perfect from your hand. 
I need to be sure. Okay, great. Thank you so much. All right, perfect. Okay. Okay, also, thank you so much, guys. Okay, yeah. Okay, audio is okay now. All right, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm very grateful. All right, thank you. Okay, I have Michael here with a youth copper connection from Lagos. It's awesome to have you here, Michael. I hope I'm very optimistic that it's going to be a very great time learning together this evening. All right. Okay, why that happens? If you're just joining, what we are doing right now is trying to know each other. It's not bad if we're able to connect from here afterwards. So tell us your name, tell us where you're connecting from, tell us what you do, and we will be excited uh, knowing or getting all of that uh, too from you somehow. You could also connect with somebody who needs your services here. I have Uka for Shidi Daniel from Lagos. I have Ademola Adeni Tom from Lagos. All right. All right, perfect. Thank you guys for coming. All right, in the space of five minutes, the meeting will finally get started and then we'll be up. Uh, let me confirm if our guest is already in. Uh, sure, should be in, in a couple of minutes from now to join us here. As soon as that is done, we get the meeting started. Usually, it is our custom that we start exactly at the right time and we close one hour. So, if you have questions, uh, kindly ensure that you prepare your questions ahead of time. So that uh, as soon as the time for question is given, you can ask your question. All right. Okay, I have Olufemi Ajayi here from Akure, Hondo State, Joshua from Hondo State Digital Marketer. Also, I have um, Michael Ajetomobi here, who is a business development manager from. Signa Alliance Limited. It's awesome having you here, guys. Uh, Kikiowo Oluwa Tobi Lover, who is a final year student from Federal University of Kure. Awesome. Great having you. All right, guys, in the next two minutes, let's do something. Share the flyer of this, of this program on your WhatsApp status. Share it on your uh, Facebook. Wherever you can get this meeting out, share this meeting out. Uh, I'm sure that it's going to uh, definitely be a major time to learn. So it's not bad if you invite your colleagues, if you invite your friends, if you invite those people that are, are your acquaintance to also connect at the moment, all right? Uh, while we're about starting, it's good to invite others too. So you can invite one or two persons who may, uh, who may likely come in and also benefit from the meeting, okay? So the next uh, two, three minutes, share, share the link, let them connect and let them also benefit from this evening's meeting. The topic or the subject of discussion, as we have um, earlier announced, is jobs and automation, how to start a winning career in tech. All right, yeah, very few minutes from now, we'll see why this is important, why this subject matter is something worth discussion. All right, currently we have 49 people in the room. Uh, we should max this out in the next 10 minutes, uh, but then you can see invite whoever is connected to you or close to you to join. Not bad if they also come in to benefit from this meeting. All right. Uh, so for those people who are just coming, let me just do a brief, uh, let me do a brief read up again. Let me check those people who have introduced themselves. But if you are just connecting, all right, one of those things we're trying to do is introduce yourself, have Shidi Daniel here, an healthcare supply chain specialist from Lagos. All right, where is there? Introduce yourself, tell us what you do. If you're just connecting, that is what we're currently doing. Everybody is trying to connect to, trying to network. I think it's important. Uh, so tell us your name. Tell us where you're connecting from. Tell us the job you do. Tell us what you're optimistic about in the meeting. All right. Uh, while that is happening too, kindly share the flyer, share the link for this meeting on your groups, on your WhatsApp groups, on your status. Let everyone have access uh, to join in. Or probably learning from this meeting also. Okay. Awesome. 
Okay, so uh, a very few minutes from now, we'll be starting and then so we boom, we are hope. Okay, while that is happening, kindly let me confirm from my hand here that the speaker is already in. Okay, I'd like to confirm when the speaker comes in. Okay, I can see Kajo Kwaye Peter, a student of Federal University, Akure, I mean, yeah, am I correct? Yeah, Federal University, Akure, you're welcome. It's nice having you here today. Okay, welcome everyone once again. If you're just joining the meeting, this is Behind the Man series. Usually it's a monthly event that we hold. We invite uh, people who are industry leaders, uh, people who have uh, led a certain level of um, understanding from the experience of things they have done, who could also share uh, a bit of their experience with us, learn from. Unfortunately, today we have the co-founder of Jobberman, who is also the founder and chairman of Ubo Host, and currently a senior technical product manager at one of the largest employment uh, sites in the world, indeed. All right, uh, coming here to share with us jobs and automation, how to start a winning career in tech. You also have a bit of his profile very soon, as soon as he comes in and we're starting, and you'll be able to see why he's what he's called. Uh, as a matter of fact, I've listened to him a couple of times. Uh, I'm very, very confident that it's a great benefit having him here. We're really very delighted. As soon as he comes in, I will introduce him, and then the meeting we get started. All right, it's 6 p.m. right now by my time, and we should be starting in a few moments from now. All right, so let me confirm from from the speak from the guest uh, to be sure when he's coming in. All right, so that um, we can have him. All right, so just give me a few bit of uh, seconds to connect with the guest and then bring him in immediately. All right, I can confirm to you that um, will be connecting us very, very soon in a matter of seconds. You will be in, and then boom, the meeting will get started. So I'll just be waiting to see from the uh, audience uh, to check that he's in. As soon as that is done, how will make him host, and then this meeting gets started. Okay, while that is about to happen, uh, like I said, Introduce yourself, let us know where you're connecting from, tell us what you do. Uh, it's, it's, it's great to know you. Okay, I have a few people who have also introduced themselves. We have Francis Oyedokun from Lagos, Shinon So from Wari. I have uh, Josima Basilo, an entrepreneur and promoter of all seven projects from Cabo Verde. Oh, wow. That's from another African country. It's also I'm having you, uh, African nation. Uh, Iroro, uh, yeah, from Lagos. Isiaka Abdulaziz, Alao from Kwara. Great having you. Okay, Triumph is a serving core member in Plateau State. Oh, great having you guys. Uh, really, really awesome having everybody here this evening. Um, in a matter of seconds, I should have um, as soon as it's seen, we will be starting right away. I just need to confirm. I just need to check uh, from the audience so that as soon as it's seen, I can bring him up stage. All right, I can see Abbas Odunola. Uh, I can see Peter Higathi from Taraba. Wow, we have people from Taraba, we are from Kaduna, we are from uh, Kadvad, 
uh, we have from um, Plateau State, okay, a front end developer from Ohio State. Also, I'm having you. Olalua from Lagos, welcome. Yeah, so we should be starting in a moment. I'm currently trying to get this guest in. Uh, as soon as he's in, we'll be starting right away. He has confirmed to me that he's coming in a bit of seconds from now, should be in. Okay, yeah. It's a place having you here, sir. Seeing you, great. All right. Okay, so we're about to start right now. Very, very excited this evening. Uh, and I'm excited that you are here also. Uh, within uh, the next few minutes, I'd like to introduce our guest to us, tell us a bit about this meeting, and then boom, the section commences. But right now I can confirm to you that Okoyemi Awoyemi is already in this place. And we're very, very excited to her host him in this uh, month's Being the Man series, as we're very, very, very sure and confident that um, many lives <laughs> will no longer remain the same from this point. Okay, from the information you will get, uh, from what you will learn from here, if you're able to make use of them, I'm sure that um, things will turn around for good on your own hand. Okay, so uh, while that is happening, I'd like to just share my screen. If you can see my screen right now, can they confirm that you can see my screen? If you can see my screen, say yes. Let's use the chat section. I like us to uh, make use of the chat section very well. Yeah, great. I can see yes. Thank you so much. All right. So, uh, like we have said earlier, the topic or the subject for discussion this month is jobs and automation, how to start a winning career in tech. And then we are excited to have our guest here, the person of Okoyemi um, Awoyemi. Uh, I will read his profile within a uh, very short moments from now. And then, yeah, from there, we'll be able to kick start. Let's give me a few minutes to read his uh, profile. Meet uh, our guests, Okoyemi Awoyemi, who is the co founder and chairman of Fugo Host. It's also, I mean, the founder and chairman of Fugo Host, co founder Jobberman. And I, I didn't put it, that, that's, that's, that's an omission. He's also the senior uh, technical product manager at Indeed, one of the largest um, employment sites in the world, currently in Texas, all right? He's connecting us from the US this evening. So I will just read his profile within a uh, very short. Um, so Opoyemi is a leading Nigerian technology entrepreneur who has successfully built two category leaders from scratch in this niche in Nigeria employment and web hosts and domain registration. Opoyemi co-founded Jobberman and helped build it to become the largest online recruitment platform in Sub-Saharan Africa with 2 million users and 100,000 plus employers in Nigeria and Ghana. Every month, Jobberman fuels 5,000 plus job opportunity. He serves as the company's first CTO, CMO, head of product, and eventually the CIO. He's also the, co he's also the founder and chairman of Ugo Host, the largest domain and cloud hosting service in Nigeria with over 50% market share of the .ng uh, domains and 35,000 plus clients. Jobberman was acquired by Ringa uh, One Africa uh, Media. And Akwaemi again played a major role in setting up room, which became the largest online classified group in Africa, partially existed to stellar group of um, institutional investors like Ringa AG, Tiger Global, and SIC. His last role at Ringa One Africa Media was head of job divisions and product strategy, with product strategy and P and held responsibility across five countries, Nigeria, Ghana, Kenya, Tanzania, and Uganda. Opoyemi work at Jobberman has been highlighted by Max Zuckerberg publicly as a leading light in using technology to create most needed development, developmental impact in Africa. All right, Opoyemi and his work has been featured in Forbes, CNN, uh, Bloomberg, Fast Company, Financial Times, BBC, CNBC, Business Day, uh, Bella Niger, and Tech Kaba, to mention a few. Through his work in marketing, products, and technology, Opoemi has directly and indirectly impacted millions of lives. Definitely, I know that the number of us here uh, has benefited one way or the other from any of those two category leading products that we have mentioned earlier. 
all right, in his quest to have global impact, Okoyemi relocated to the United States to build Money Mine, a platform to democratize ability to invest in global financial instruments while pursuing his dreams. While pursuing these dreams, he's gaining an international work experience at Indeed, the largest job website as a product lead for job seekers, job seeker APIs. Also, an in angel investor. He has made bets on tech startups in Nigeria, Kenya, US, and UK. Currently serves as a venture partner to portfolio businesses and select entrepreneurs, helping them grow, start, grow, and scale technology-enabled ventures. He holds a Bachelor of Science in Computer Science and Engineering from the Obafemi Awolowo University in Nigeria, and completed an executive education program for CIOs and technology leaders from CIO Institute, Haas Business School, an executive education program at one Thumb Business School on innovation and growth. He has a domain expertise in technology innovation, technology leadership, program development, growth marketing, user experience, graphics and web, develop, uh, web design, and online marketing. He's an advisor and investor to a couple of tech startups in a year in the e-commerce, mobile payments, new media, and entertainment space. Opoemi is happily married to Omarara with two children. If you're excited to have Opoemi Awoyemi here, you can see the great profile. You can see who you are meeting. It's a big opportunity for all of us here. Kindly use the search, uh, chat section and say, yes, you're welcome. Uh, if you're excited to have him here right away, let the chat section right now be on fire. You are welcome. Let's welcome him right here before he uh, speaks, before he you know, mutes himself. Let us have at least 100 welcome. We have about how many people here? 85 people currently. I need you to welcome him. Yes, I need about 20 more. 20 more welcome. Yeah, great, great. Thank you so much. Wow, it's awesome. You're welcome, sir. I'm excited, very, very excited to have you uh, on our invitation and come yeah. on uh, to join us this month. You're welcome. Thank you very much, Bayade. Thank you for having me. Um, good evening to everyone. Uh, thanks for the, uh, should I say, um, replication of you know the applause that you get if it was a real life event i can feel the applause ringing in my ears uh, thank you very much <laughs> it's great having you sir great very great having you sir all right so uh because of time we're just moving straight uh into the series uh like we have um, earlier mentioned the subject this month is jobs and automation uh how to start a winning career in tech uh so i would like to at first want to know a bit about your experience how you started and all of that uh, you are funded from the profile. You are funded two major category leaders. Jobberman is not what is a brand that everybody knows here in this country. Who goes widely known? All right. These are two major players in the tech industry in Nigeria, as far as we are concerned. And currently, you are also, you are also a senior uh, technical product manager in the largest employment site in the world. Uh, you started this while you're a student. Um, at least Jobberman, I know. You started while you're a student in Obafemi Awolowo University. I, I would like to know what's the motivation at that time? What, how did you get started so early? <laughs> uh, what, what was the motivation? And then was it that your education, I mean, the fact that you studied computer engineering and uh, computer science and engineering, was that what contributed to your passion or uh, that fueled you to get some of these things done so quickly? Um, thank you very much. Um, good question. Um, I will try and spend just two minutes on that question because we don't have a lot of time. Uh, so. I started my career in tech pretty much just before I um, entered Obafemiolo University. So uh, it was just during that gap year from secondary school to um, university. And um, the first thing I did was I learned gra graphics design, uh, which was between you and I, I didn't like, I, I was not intentional about it. It was just like a, a chance opportunity. I was actually looking for a job at the Saba Cafe, right? Um, and I didn't get one. So my sister, who was the one who was assisting me in looking for that job, told me that, hey, I know some guy who can teach graphics design um, on campus. Um, if you don't mind, since you didn't get a job, you can come and do um, the graphics design class. And that's, that's how I went ahead and did the class. And I fell in love with graphics design. And I just kept on improving myself. Uh, interning with the person who taught me, stayed there for long, improved myself. And I also learned web design, specifically, the graphics class was four weeks. I ended up staying for six months. Web design, I had a one-hour one class. That's all I got in web design in terms of training, one-hour class. And um, I just kept on developing myself on my own. And 
I got into Obat Miola University, um, started a business, uh, which was focused on graphics and web design. And in my second year university, I took the step forward to start learning web development. All of this was self-taught, right? Um, I did study computer science and engineering at the Obat Miola University, but I can tell you that uh, I did not learn web design or software programming in Obat Miola University or as a student, right? I learned it on my, on my own. And that's where a lot of people miss it. Um, school is going to teach you like the fundamentals, the basics, but school really is not there to teach you how to program so that you can make money or so that you can build products, right? At least most schools are not. And this is not a Nigerian problem. A lot of people think it's a Nigerian problem. It's a global problem. Schools train you to basically uh, be, be, schools do what we call standardized training. They pretty much prepare you for life, right? Um, they don't necessarily give you the specific skills. You need to do the work. Some schools do better than others, but generally, most schools don't necessarily teach you, it is what you're going to do at the place of work, right? They expect you to kind of develop other skills on the go and become a, a rounded um, person at the end of the day. Wow, wow, wow. This is great to know. Uh, thank you so much uh, for that. So I'd like to jump on onto the uh, subject matter, jobs and automation, um, starting a career in tech. Uh, so I, I just allow you to flow around this uh, for a bit of a minute, sir. <laughs> you're, you're inside about this, this subject. Starting a career in tech, right? Um, yeah. So when it comes to starting a career in tech, um, there is no clear entry point. You can enter through any means, right? Um, so let me talk about like background in the, the, the firstly. Um, I had a computer science and engineering background, but like I said, I learned um, coding outside of um, class itself. Uh, my co-founder at Jobberman had a medical background. He's a medical doctor, right? Um, that's a really divergent uh, background. I've seen people in tech that, uh, that, that, that studied law. I've also seen people in tech that did not go um, to um, college. They have um, high school uh, education. And I tell you, not just in, in Nigeria, also in the US, right? And I'm, and I'm not talking Mark Zuckerberg like uh, I'm not going to college. I'm talking regular people, right? Who have yeah. built careers in company and they didn't even start any company, but they built careers in company without actually going to university, right? Um, so pretty much you can enter in any way, right? Uh, the biggest part that you need to understand about tech companies is problem solving is at the heart of every tech company. Every tech company is built to create value. Uh, and that's why even today, it's difficult to really call a company a tech company. It's really like more like a tech enabled company, right? Because think about German, we're solving problem of jobs. We're not solving tech problems. Google, yeah. we're helping you get your business online. That's what we're doing, right? Yeah. Um, we're not tech tech for the sake of tech. So at the end of the day, it's about problem solving. So I always tell people that the easiest way to enter into tech is to solve a problem, either as an employee, or a startup founder, right? Um, know a problem you want to solve and see how technology can help you solve that problem and apply those principles within your company or on your own um, small business. Um, it's also important that you can, to know that you cannot pour out of an empty cup, an, an empty cup, right? Um, to do well in tech, you need the knowledge. The knowledge could be having the software skills, having the product management skills, or having just generalized knowledge about what happens in the tech space and keep on improving yourself. There's also data. So people want to be data scientists, scientists, but we want to do online marketing, digital marketing, whatever you want to learn, right? Uh, pretty much figure out like which of those tracks you want to follow and I are going to apply that to um, solving problems. Some people also think of tech as simply a way to make money. Great. I have no problem with that. I didn't start tech to make money. Um, I kind of was solving the problem and then you discover that you can make money with it. I always prefer that approach because it gives you an opportunity to always continue to learn on the, on the job, right? Um, to learn on the way. If you're thinking too much about money, you might just think, oh, once I learn this, I'll keep making money and I don't need to learn anything else. No, you have to put yourself in a space where you have, uh, you, you continue to learn, right? Continuous learning and you continue to improve. You want to learn new ways of doing things. And um, that's the best way to, um, should I say, push your career in tech. More specifically and practically, um, join a tech enabled company, join a small company, a large company that is um, really pushing forward in, in, in tech and being among those people would help you to learn more. I've, I've, I've come to understand that more importantly than wanting to learn on your own, being among the right people can really help you in life, um, can really help you to grow really fast, right? So I always advise that 
join a company, join other people trying to build a startup. You're going to get more knowledge that way than trying to go on your own at first. Wow. Wow. This is really, really awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, very excited to see how, uh, because some of these questions, some of these um, insights you've thrown around, usually many people think you need to have a computer science degree, probably to learn programming or to know how to code or probably to, to get involved in technology. But obviously now I have seen that even an SSE holder, they already doing very, very well. Uh, it has to do with interest. It has to do with, uh, yeah. Uh, your willingness to develop yourself in a certain area that you have interest in, and, and, and this is great. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, so I, I want to jump off straight. Uh, uh, automation is a major uh, subject that have been discussed in several cycles. And then uh, sometimes people worry a lot more about uh, the probability that it may create job loss, all right? Uh, but then uh, is there a balancing? Uh, is, there, is there some interpolation? between jobs and automation, as far as probably creating jobs or people losing jobs. What, uh, can you give us a little bit of insight around this? Sir? Okay, this is an interesting topic to me. I have actually spent the last couple of um, weeks thinking hard um, around the robotic process automation. So um, I'm like very delighted to, uh, to chat about this. And I think you guys will get, you guys will get like a really, um, some really interesting perspectives um, on that today. So yeah, please listen well. <laughs> Um, so let, let's, let's kind of, um, break automation down a bit more, right? Um, a lot of people think automation, people are going to lose jobs because of automation, but let's kind of break automation down, take it like back, uh, back memory lane. So, um, movement maybe, um, in the, in the uh, 18th, 17th century was pretty much, um, by horses, right? Um, camels, you know, or foot, right? Um. We did some automation there. We moved to chariots, uh, you know, um, all these um, us driven carriages, chariots and whatnot. And then from there, we moved to, to, to cars, right? Um, and from cars, we moved to trains, we moved to planes, right? Um, we even moved from just automating how we move to automating how we move things, not even people, right? So uh, move things include things like internet came, email came, now you don't have to send a messenger on foot to go and deliver a letter, right? You don't have to send somebody by post and wait for it to arrive. You send it instantly, it arrives, right? We've automated the way we do meetings. We are all here today on Zoom, right? I, 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 having a meeting. So pretty much we're changing. A lot of things are changing how people work. And so the question I'll ask you is, has the world become poorer in the last 100 years by some of these scientific advancements? The answer is no, right? Um, the answer is no. So why do we think it's going to become poorer in the future? Why do we think it's going to take jobs where people are going to become poorer? Why do we think automation is going to destroy the world? And, and I can explain why people think that way. It's also simple. The reality is scientific advancement is neither for good or for bad, right? It's just scientific advancement at ease, right? Um, the result of that is whatever we make out of it as, as humans. So let's think about um, a, a very um, interesting example, nuclear energy and nuclear bombs, right? Um, right. World War II saw America bombing Hiroshima and pretty much the world knew immediately that, man, nuclear bombs are not something to be toyed with. These things can, can, uh, can destroy the world in the moment. Um, a very good senior friend of mine likes to say that the reason why there's unity and global peace in the world is just for two reasons, capitalism and nuclear weapons, right? Um, capitalism means I'm going to be friends with Nigeria because I can make money from Nigeria not because I like Nigeria, right? And nuclear weapons mean, I'm going to destroy Nigeria. I'm sorry, America is saying, I'm going to destroy China. And China saying, I'm going to destroy you too. So there's what we call mutually assured destruction, right? So if you destroy me, I will destroy you, you know? And everything can happen within a matter of success. Like, okay, let's, let's be peaceful. And so nobody will destroy each other. Each other. <laughs> you know? so, 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 when, so but I, I digress there. So talking about nuclear bombs versus nuclear energy, right? The same thing that was used to create destruction, um, destructive tools, nuclear bombs, is the same tool that is also being used to create nuclear energy, right? Today in France, 74% of France electricity is generated from nuclear energy, right? Even in the US is 19%. South Korea is 30%, right? So it's a, it's a, it's a viable um, should I say, tool for development, but it can also be repurposed for destruction. So that's the thing about AI, right? So when you think about AI, you can think about AI as taking work away from people, 
You can also think about AI as giving people tools that make them work better and faster. So yeah. think about, um, I could remember when I was much younger in Obafemi University, my, my dad um, was a university administrator in Obafemi University, right? Um, so I'll go to his office and then I'll see typists and he'll be hearing pa, 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 pa. And they push that, you know, that carriage back, pa, 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 and the paper is moving, you know? And I can remember I tried it myself, right? Also, I tried it in, in secondary school. Typewriting can be hard, like you're really going down on those keyboards and it's really hard, right? And now think about it today. If I ask all of you to bring your phones out and actually type on your phone without looking at the, at the, at the, at the keyboard, you discover that a lot of us can type very well today, even better than those of, most of those typists. And we never can't, we can't really even remember when we learned how to type. Like you didn't actually try to learn it. Just out of habit, you just, you just know where all the keys are. And believe you me, if you look at your keyboard again, you know, or maybe you've never noticed that it's not written as A, B, C, D. It's A, S, D, F, column, L, K, J, you know, Quesi. That's the way, way it has always been written on keyboards or and, type, and, and, and typewriter keyboards. And we all know how to use it today. So imagine then you have to go to school to learn how to be a typist. Now everybody can type. So the, is that taking work away or is making us smarter as human beings, right? And increasing productivity for everyone. So that's what we need to think about, right? That democratization of knowledge, democratization, democratization of opportunities, democratization of tools actually makes the world better, right? Um, so uh, other, other interesting examples, right, that we can, we can bring, bring, bring out of that is things like how, how we store information um, today. We don't have to store information on, on, on physical files anymore. We can store online. So a lot of us can do storage and our, our, our ability to store information to rely on, on knowledge that has been created before now is better than it was um, 100 years ago. Has it taken jobs away? I would think not. I would think it has created better jobs and it will continue to create um, better jobs. But of course, like I said um, before, it all depends on also industry leaders on how they, we think about automation and AI. And now we also um, bring out some of the tools we are creating. So rather than create tools that actually take jobs away, create tools that actually improve someone's ability to do their jobs faster. Yeah. Right. Someone's ability to, to do, to start doing something new while what they spent um, 20 hours to do before, they can do it in five minutes and they start doing something new. Um, last example, I can remember there was a staff I had at Joberman then who, um, was, who was the person that was responsible for content for social media. And I said, come and start doing digital analytics. And the person was very angry with me. He said, take me from social, um, social media to that. Uh, and you take me to a place where um, everything is being automated. What will happen to my job? I said, let me tell you, you're, you're, you're very dear to me. I'll tell you, I've just made your life better. I've given you ability to earn more. I've given you ability to be more strategic about the work you do, not to be doing rote work, right? Mm -hmm. um, you're going to develop it and you're going to be a better person overall. So just, just stop thinking you need to stay in rote work, right? So what does this mean for automation and Iman? What it means for us is that we need to understand that automation would improve our lives, but that we also need to evolve. Um, and when I mean evolve, it means embrace it, use it to make your work better, right? Uh, I like the con concept of working yourself out of a job, right? Mm -hmm. If you work, it, 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 the concept of working yourself out of a job is that you work yourself out of the duties, but not necessarily out of the job. You will discover mm -hmm. that you are more productive, right? Yeah. You are now doing something that is more strategic rather than the one that is running around, pee, 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 carrying files. You are not going to sit in one place, sends the file, sends the file. Your guy will still have to come and ask you for the file. That wouldn't change, but you don't have to be carrying that running around and be telling yourself you are working, right? Stop working hard and start, start working smart. I think that's exactly what automation is going to do if uh, industry leaders um, deploy this um, very, very well. Another thing about autom automation, let me talk about AI a bit in automation. Right. AI is, a, is an interesting part of automation where it's not just automating, it's actually learning, right, um, from past work. So AI can also be used for good in the sense that imagine a process you do your company today and you spend 10 hours doing it, but someone else is doing it another team and is using one hour. How can AI surface that information to you so that you cannot do it better as well in one hour? That is AI for good. Rather than AI taking someone's job away, it improves how they do their job, right? Um, just to um, wrap that up, um, it requires us to learn new skills, 
right? At the very least, evolve our skill sets. I mentioned the typist or the bookkeeper. So imagine the typist or bookkeeper becoming someone who is very good with productivity tools. I mean, Microsoft Excel, Microsoft uh, Word, um, Excel, online tools like Google Sheets, Google Docs, right? So becoming an integration service consultant that's kind of helping people connect these things together and making life easy rather than carrying files about and moving. That is growth. That is evolution. So I think that's how we should think about uh, automation um, in itself. Wow, this is excellent. I think what makes it outstanding is the how you're able to break the whole stuff down in bits, making it so simple to, to, to understand. Uh, it's uh, really great uh, having you there. So uh, um, uh, th there's a lot of um, thoughts around um, uh, people learning programming skill, coding skill. To what extent do you think uh, this is important? Uh, as a matter of fact, I've seen uh, I've seen um, articles that states that um, everyone should la learn how to code. All right, but then do you think this is important? Uh? Um. <clears throat> I have a slightly contrary an, uh, answer to that. I think everyone should learn how to create. I do not think everyone should learn how to code, right? Um, sometimes the only reason why I actually advise people to code because is, uh, is because I realize a lot of people have a mental barrier to tech. And until they learn how to code, they don't believe that they can do tech. So if learning how to code help, helps you solve that problem, please go and learn how to code. But you really do not need to know how to code, to be in tech, or to solve a problem, right? Um, now, that being said, I should also mention that there are a lot of platforms that develop, uh, that have been um, created now, that even makes coding skills obsolete, right? So if you think it's all about how to code, there are tools that will even make coding skills obsolete. It's really about learning and evolving, just not about learning how to code. When I started coding, right, the key things to learn there was .NET, PHP, MySQL. Today, a lot of developers, I know there are developers on, the, on this call, a lot of them don't know anything about PHP. A lot of them start with React, Node, right? Some of these new languages. I don't know React, I don't know Node. You get the point. Am I obsolete in coding world? The answer is yes. Am I obsolete as a human being? The answer is no, never, right? Because I keep evolving myself on the things that really matter that I need to learn. You get the point, right? Now, so what I would say is, if you want to learn how to today, maybe coding today uh, is the fastest way to get a job in tech, right? Because we clearly need more software developers um, than we need more product managers. We need more software developers and we need more founders, right? So it's the fastest way to get it, especially if you're not an entrepreneur and if you don't see yourself as a problem solver. I think everybody should problem solvers, by the way. I would mention that again. But if you don't see yourself as that, coding, might be your fastest way. Today, a coder in, who sits in Nigeria but is working for an international company would earn on an average between 200,000 Naira to, not an average, but range, 200,000 Naira to maybe 2 million Naira, right? And a lot of Nigerians are in that group. They sit at home. Their parents think they are doing Yahoo Yahoo, right? But what they are really doing is they are doing software yeah. development for, for companies. Um, I mentioned the Yahoo Yahoo part because while I was also uh, in university, you know, I go about with my laptop on my back, in my bag, and I could remember asking one of my younger cousins that someone asked him that, what does Opet do? And he said, Opet does Yahoo Yahoo. It was kind of interesting. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, great. Uh, very, very awesome insight. Um, and I think it's clear enough seeing uh, what is most important, and even if you are going to learn coding, what you should do with it. Uh, very important that uh, one is able to evolve, you're able to grow your knowledge, and you're not static. Uh, and then, principally, at the end of the day, what's most important is what problem are you solving with it, and how is it impacting other people? Uh, <laughs> someone is asking, What does coding mean? All right, probably that will be answered uh, in a bit later. Um, finally, before I allow question and answer, I think uh, it's about um, two minutes to question and answer. Uh, I would want to ask uh, one last question. You have been in the Nigeria uh, uh, tech space um, for for a while now, uh, and up to now, you're still very, very uh, relevant in the space. Uh, looking at the whole loss that is happening as far as um, learning programming is concerned, all of that, can there be any time when, um, 
even people who are learning software development will not be able to get jobs, all right? Um, could there be that point when, <laughs> because of plenty of people trying to, because as a matter of fact, the truth is, because of the high rate of unemployment in Nigeria, the truth is plenty, you have a number of people who are, who are learning. So, but then can we ever come to that point? But then can we also leverage it as a nation, as an exchange? Right now, I've seen you talking about people who are sitting in their comfort at, in their homes, working with international firm and earning, I have a few friends like that too, who are earning as much as $3,000, $10,000 per month, just working from home, working from international companies here in Nigeria. Uh, so do, 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 what do you think about, <laughs> about balancing this? Uh, uh, somebody who's thinking, uh, probably I don't even, I, I, I don't need it as it were. Uh, just on a, on a general note, what, what's your perspective about this? Okay. Um... Before I answer that question, can I just quickly answer, um, answer the person who asked the question, what does what does someone need to know to create? When I say to create, to create means to solve problems. Everywhere you go, whatever you do in life, stop being someone that complains about everything. See problems you can solve. Look out for things, say, oh, they're not doing this well. When I started Java Man, I started Java Man because I couldn't get a job as an intern. I had to intern with my own company, right? When I started Google, it was because it was taking me three days to host a website. And I could imagine that a lot of other people were also feeling, uh, having the same problem. So don't walk around just being a consumer. Look at, oh, my friends are having difficulty doing this, or it takes us too much time to do this. What if I aggregate everything together and I was helping them doing this and they were paying me something small for it? That's how to think, that's how to, to, to get a creation, a creator mindset, right? And over time, you start with something small. Yeah. Over time, you know that your creator mindset just begin to get better and get better and get better. So you can actually start thinking about larger things, right? That's what I mean by creating. So um, having answered that question, will there be a time where um, jobs, where um, people in software development will not get jobs? Um, it's possible, but it's unlikely. <laughs> uh, sorry, those two answers contradict, contradict themselves. Um, it's possible <laughs> basically because someone is not putting themselves in the right place or position to get a job. So. Um, there's someone that I, I, I was recently referred to, interesting guy, um, I was like seven years in web development, as in software development, and his cousin reached out to me, I was begging him to help him get a job. And I'm like, okay, let me speak to the guy. Let me see, see his resume. I saw his resume, he's even worked with a company in the UK before. Why does he have a job? Why is someone begging him to help this kind of guy get a job? And I realized, that not everybody knows that they can actually get a job for themselves, right? Um, so people just wait to, and they are, they are complaining that they don't have jobs and thinking jobs will come to them or thinking it's just all about applying. It's not about applying alone. There's a part of you reaching out to get you, there's a part of you understanding where the jobs are. So if you're a software developer, for example, and that's five years in software, or you're really just so good and you are in Onicha or Ileife or Shoe State, right? Don't sit down there. Start reaching out to companies in Lagos. Start telling them that, hey, I'm really good at this. This is what I've been doing. This sample of my work. Do some work samples. That's also another thing. Do your own work samples. Write articles online explaining how to do stuff in tech. Let people put yourself out there. Put yourself out there. Without talking to people directly, using social media, LinkedIn, um, reaching out to employers and saying, hey, I can do this for you. What do you think? You have to put yourself out there. If you don't put yourself out there, you're not going to get a job. How did I get in touch with Indeed? I reached out to someone I've known. I, I met him like maybe four, five years ago in Australia. And I'm like, hey, you're in Austin. I am interested in moving to Austin. Let's chat. And he's like, hey, rather than start your business immediately, I think Indeed would definitely love to have you around. What do you think? Let's come, come talk to my people at Indeed. And that was it. I didn't apply for the job, like normal application for the job, right? And Maybe, I should, maybe that's a lie. Maybe I actually applied for jobs on Indeed and Indeed said no to all my jobs. Frankly, maybe actually that's what happened, right? Um, video watch every single application I made, they rejected me, <laughs> right? <laughs> but when I spoke to somebody, wow. and I took the vote of the interviewer, and I'm like, how come we never spoke to you? How come we never saw your resume? Like, you probably saw it, but some ignorant HR we didn't understand tech, or we couldn't, we couldn't understand that this guy has founded the biggest job site in Africa, right? Say, this person did not yeah. go to the US. You don't care. And, and just treat the CV somewhere. You get the point. Those kind of things happen. That's real life for yeah. you, right? 
So don't put your hand in the hands of some like, junior HR who is going to just, who, who has 10 minutes to look through 1,000 CV, right? Put yourself out yeah, there. Sure. <laughs> you get the point. So that's, mm-hmm. that's that part. Uh, most people don't know that. That's on, on one part. Then on the other part, in terms of like macroeconomics, right? Are we going to have too many software developers in Nigeria? No. In China is a good example, right? China is 1 billion people. Yeah. Today, they have scarcity of software developers. And I know a couple of Chinese, Chinese companies are hiring software developers in Africa to, to do work for companies in China. China. And China has 1 billion people. You can imagine. What does that tell you? That tells you that the market of software developers is even still growing and growing. India, India software development is the largest contributor to GDP of India, bringing in 180 billion dollars annually from developers both at home and abroad. Wow. What is Nigeria's zone? I, I'm not even sure it's one percent, and we don't have jobs. <laughs> so you can see we see oh we don't. Wow. So, <laughs> So, so just kind of quickly mention Andela as well. A lot of people misunderstand what's happening with Andela. Andela lets people go, not because they are failing as a business, but because they change their business model. Yeah. Andela was training developers and training them faster than it was placing them. And a lot of those developers were not putting themselves to good use. God forgive me. I can't say that outside because you have to understand that it's also not easy to learn some of this. Some of those developers were just sitting in the office, not doing much because Andela promised them a monthly salary, regardless of whether they work or not. Yes. If you give a Nigerian monthly salary and you don't give him work, will he not take it? You will take it now. And you that. <laughs> which was exactly, <laughs> which was exactly the situation there. And some of those developers were also complaining. So Andela wasn't really sure, like, what are we really doing, right? And when Adela started, a lot of people were not getting themselves really good in working with foreign companies. But over time, Adela had already in, in, in improved the knowledge in the ecosystem that developers will sit down in their house in no nature, wherever, and develop themselves. The materials are there now. The understanding is there. Success stories are there. So no, Adela felt like they didn't need to be involved in teaching people anymore, right? Right. Companies like TechBridge are doing that work today, right? So Adela is like, everybody go and do the training. When you want the job, come and meet us. Now, what Anela does is Anela says you can be anywhere and we'll interview you once you are good, we'll put you to the job. These are developers that are earning three thousand, four thousand, five thousand dollars on a monthly basis, right? So Anela is doing very well. Very, very well. In fact, this might be their biggest year yet. I won't lie to you in terms of profits, right? Um, so people should not misunderstand what happened with Anela has lost. It's a business, it's a, it's a strategic business decision to let go of junior developers and focus on senior um developers so it's even it's even a, a, a testimony to the a test, a testament to the fact that nigeria we are evolving we now have enough senior developers that Adela is fine with having just senior developers we have enough senior developers in the market so that's oh, so right. 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 so 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 that's so that's right. who is yeah. right why well, okay. john you make a here uh all right thanks so much so farmer um, this is a very great insight, uh, and then I think it it basically has led to raise the number of questions um, that people have asked um, during the because when the form was shared, there are a lot of questions people asked. But right now, uh, it's time to to ask questions. If you have questions right now, uh, this is the right time. So you can use the chat section, drop your questions, and then you will have answers to it. Uh, I'll be waiting. Okay, so if you have questions, drop your questions right away in the chat. I'll be willing to take it. And then from there, uh, our host, I mean, our guest will be able to answer your question. All right. Uh, relevant questions anyway. <laughs> okay, how so. Ask the question, how does one join Andela? Please and please. It's a good question. And I appreciate you asking and I've answered you, right? Yeah. The answer is simple, andela.com. A lot of us, we process things too much that we don't know that the solution is just right in front of us. Don't ask questions like, how do you join Andela? Go and join Andela. Simple. Go to Andela's website. <laughs> right? But you think there's no that needs to help you to join Andela, then you sit and you don't do the thing you need to do. Right? And you realize that it was always there. Andela.com is the simple answer. It's that straightforward. Go and join Andela on Andela.com. Right? Um, thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> All right, um, so uh, somebody's also asking, uh, 
all right i would uh, be i will take questions that i uh, i believe have not been answered or that i believe um yeah questions that you can certainly get answers to from just straight away all right those are not the kind of questions we want to spend time talking about here okay so somebody's asking how can someone who has a lot of business ideas in tech and other areas start from the scratch <laughs> well <laughs> so probably could have assist that person but i think yeah so if you have a lot of business ideas um i would say go and join a company and learn how people make an idea into a solution i think that's also a challenge with a lot of folks a, a lot of people think um succeeding in technical and technology entrepreneurship is about ideas no it is not about it ideas it's about executing on the ideas so your idea does not mean much and in most cases in most cases your idea is actually not a not a really uh should i say great idea you just think it's great like everybody thinks the ideas are great including myself right it's just yeah. natural you know um but in most in reality your idea might not be really great so join a company see exactly how it's done shadow other companies see how it's done that's one then secondly if you want to actually do a startup take one idea not many ideas one please just one right find a tech founder that you met in one of the companies you joined or that you met in some coding school or wherever and try and do something together with that with that person a lot of people complain that i'm i'm, I'm unable to find a a a, a, a tech co-founder probably the reality is you are unable to find a tech co-founder simply because your idea is not great and you're also not having a lot to offer that's the reality so sometimes we need um to to tell ourselves the truth about something that we don't just know a lot around this is and you know you try and um build your competence over time and then you find it easy to get a tech um co-founder afterwards yeah wow thank you so much for that um somebody is also asking uh, okay i think that's already answered somebody is saying what project are you working on i think that was read in the profile um uh, and then uh, somebody who is asking about um, getting front-end developers jobs reach out to the founders and then uh wow it's i think this is also generous he also dropped his email so you can find that in the chat for you to reach out if it's something within internships yeah reach out to tech funders already that is already overstated um okay so what are the challenges what are your challenges and how did you face them uh, so um okay, i think yeah go on sir. challenges is a very um should i say ambiguous word i do face different kind of challenges in life um one is balancing um ambition um to realism um deciding how far you want to go because becoming super successful and building businesses um it takes a lot of hard work and a lot of sacrifices right um and sometimes it might be difficult for you to kind of measure why you are you, why why you even, even doing this you know um so for me i've made a lot of money in my life right millions tens of millions hundreds of millions right the question is how far should i keep going right what do i really want out of life why am i doing this you know sometimes it's difficult to answer that question and i think it's a question every human being needs to answer um themselves that's one um the second challenge um you face you um people face it generally is in especially when you're building a business is in the early stages of your business it's going to look like it's not working well things are just going to move so slowly the developers are not going to crank stuff out of time you yourself you'll be disappointed you launch a product you think you're going to get 1 million people signing up on first day and then zero people sign up on first day right and then you have to kind of walk through all of that you know and you can get tired easily so that's also one challenge you definitely face i solved that by having partners i'd like not to work alone as much as possible except the pet project right having partners who just them saying sorry or them say okay i have this other idea on how we could make this better right all those things have a way of helping you to stay strong and stay on the course right so um that's how i solved that problem as well um a lot of people also talk about the problem of capital i don't consider capital being a problem i don't even like raising capital until my business is working um but yeah it it fell in fairness it's a genuine problem right um i would always say raise your first capital from friends and family and try and grow something then based on the on what you achieve with that growth talk to experienced founders let them advise you on what to do let them advise on your who to talk to and then you can keep moving um forward in your in, in, in terms of financing 
And also, I should mention, please don't think financing is the solution to all problems. I've built two businesses that have become big that they mentioned. I mean, the environment they mentioned earlier, Jobberman and also Ugo's. Let me just tell you for a fact, I made more money than Ugo's in my life than I made from Jobberman. Most people don't know. But Jobberman is the one that is the most popular. And Jobberman is the one that was venture funded. Venture funded businesses sometimes, you might end up working for the venture capitalists, not for yourself, right? <laughs> when you're making money for them and not making money for yourself, please. So when you think about funding and, uh, and you always just get to the, into the mode of funding, 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 be very careful, be very careful. You raise money only because you really need to, right? It will help you. It's not like funding does not help, but don't think funding is a solution to all problems. Having raised funds is not a sign of success. You might enjoy it initially. Now you have a lot of money at your disposal. You can hire 100 people, but then you might regret it later on as well. So please keep it balanced. It's always important. This is uh, awesome. Thank you so much for uh, that uh, insight. Uh, let me check if we have other questions. We just have, um, okay, I think the time for question is almost off now, but then I just want to check if there are one or two more questions that make sense that, that we can take before the end of the day. Someone right, asked the question uh, here. Um, let me okay. just answer this. Do we have good automation right. training institutes in Nigeria where one can go for training? Please, I think you might have missed the point. Stop thinking of things from a context, I want to become an automation person. There's nothing like automation person. <laughs> Stop that kind of thinking. Think like a problem solver. Automation in different industries is used to solve problems. So there could be training in a particular software that allows you to automate things better, right? But there's nothing called automation training in general. One software that is very common in the US now that people that a lot of large enterprise companies use to automate processes and small companies don't use it because they can't even afford it. It's called UiPath, right? Um, I, I, I've seen Nigerians that know how to use UiPath very well, but then they don't work for Nigerian companies. They work for foreign companies. I'm not even sure I know any Nigerian company that uses UiPath. Uh, but then think like a problem solver. Don't say, I want to go and learn how to become an automation trainer or, or, or an automation person. That, that doesn't mean anything. It doesn't make any sense, right? Focus on the problem that needs to be solved, uh, not thinking about certifications and whatnot. Focus on problem solving, not certifications and whatnot. Thank you. Focus on problem solving. Uh, Someone said something. Sorry. Okay. Yes. Yes. So I'm just trying to rush through the questions because I'm seeing the chat myself. Um, what advice would you give to anyone engaged in tech and price on a part-time basis, especially during this pandemic? Um, I would say plan your time very well. Uh, also, try and solve problems that uh, don't would necessarily take a lot of your time. Uh, when I mean take a lot of time, building startups can be hard, right? Some people, it takes them six months, one year to get their first customer building a startup, right? But you can do something on the side that is just digitally enabled that solves an problem immediately. Um, I like, uh, an example I like to give lately is an example of my um, son's Yoruba teacher, right? I live in Austin, Texas. My Yoruba teacher lives in Oshibo Ibadan. I'm not sure where she lives now, right? My son's Yoruba teacher. And they do classes Saturdays and Sundays on Zoom. As I'm having this class, um, this seminar now is also uh, having his own class as well in another room, right? Uh, she started with $6, she's put her price, price to $8. She's had like five customers at least through us. And now since that she's built a brand around it and she has a lot of more teachers that are working for her. That is millions of Naira coming from just teaching Yoruba on Zoom, right? That's how to think about solving problems. Right. Yes, exactly. Uh, so that's a perfect example I like talking about because teaching Yoruba has no tech inside of it. No tech. Right. It's super low tech, just Zoom. Right. And she shares the textbooks, PDFs that are going to use with you, and then they engage on the course, and that is it. So think about how to solve problems that way. Um, thank you very much. What advice do you have for a teacher with passion for STEM? Yeah, keep teaching your students, keep helping your students grow. Keep learning new things you can teach your students so that your students can also become better. Uh, also answer for yourself whether you want it to scale or you're just committed to teaching. Um, teaching sometimes can be a tank tankless job, right? Because um, the impact is very one-on-one -on -one and you might not necessarily see the results until that student becomes um, Mark Zuckerberg or Koemi or Koemi or whatnot in 20 years time. And they might not necessarily come back to you to actually thank you. You know, and give you anything. So that's the thing about teaching. So answer the question yourself whether 
you just have a passion for it or you're looking to scale it. Yes, you can scale it. You can teach online. You can start thinking about teaching a STEM school, take it from a, a STEM uh, class to becoming a STEM school. Um, TechBridge is doing wonderful stuff in that space. There's a lot of stuff you could possibly do and make a lot of money um, as well from teaching while still keeping, um, your, keep, keeping true to your passion and also making money um, as a result. Wow. Thank you so much, sir. Um, really great to have you answer some of these major questions uh, in a very, very uh, delightful manner. Um, we are almost out of time, and I like um, we usually want to do, we want to keep to time so that uh, if we tell our guests we are spending one hour, we don't end up <laughs> uh, going beyond what we have um, uh, promised to do. So we're just about um, six minutes before seven. And then I would like to start rounding up. Uh, I want to appreciate everybody who came uh, or, uh, that currently currently on this call. Uh, thank you so much for coming. Um, we have dropped, I mean, I've dropped uh, social media handles uh, so that for subsequent edition of this Be In Demand series, you can always join us. Uh, much more beyond that too, I think I've dropped the link for our Telegram channel, uh, Bridge Nigeria. Uh, I've also dropped that right here on the chat. Uh, more importantly, too, I'd like to announce the Make Africa Tech Challenge. We're having the Court 2 registration currently ongoing. And um, there are two courses that we're taking, full stack code development and data science. All right, the registration for that close is next Friday. So if you're interested in joining the next court, ensure that you complete your registration before Friday. Okay, if you, have, if you don't have enough details about it, currently I'm sharing my screen so you can see the link to apply uh, for that right there on the screen. There's a number of stuff that will happen in the next couple of uh, weeks uh, as far as uh, training for children for secondary and primary school uh, for those people who are looking forward to probably setting up code clubs in their state and all of that. So if you join the uh, TechBridge um, Telegram channel, you have access to some of those information as soon as they come up. Uh, so while all that is important, I want to at this point again say thank you to uh, Mr. Koyemi Awoyemi for coming on our call. And as a matter of fact, personally, I've learned for myself in the course of this conversation, and it's been a light pop, boom, light up. Uh, the first time I had a one-on-one -on -one discussion with him, it was as if I've never had that kind of communication or conversation in my life before, because it was something that just changed the trajectory of my thinking immediately, all right? I started thinking differently, and then ever since then, I've always liked to keep connected. I'm glad he agreed to come to this moment, and it's really wonderful, probably because I was born in September anyway. <laughs> All right, so uh, right now, we're about rounding up. I just need you to show gratitude. Uh, I'm already seeing that coming up. Show gratitude to uh, Mr. Koyemi. Let's use the chat, and we say thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Thank you so much for coming. We are very grateful. At this point, uh, I want to appreciate all the Tech Bridge team members, uh, those people who invited um, people to attend this section. Uh, thank you so much, uh, everyone. Uh, next thank month, we're going to be seeing. All right. Uh, at this point, once again, I want to say thank you, sir. Thank you for coming. We are very, very grateful. My regards to uh, your family, your wife, and your children, sir. <laughs> thank you very much for having me. Um, thank you, everyone, for taking the time to, to listen. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, sir. You're welcome. Bye. Thanks, sir. All right. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone. Uh, it's, it's a wrap today. Um, you can follow us on social media, as I mentioned earlier. All the links are already dropped. Also on Telegram. You can reach out to the person who invited you if you, do, if you missed out on any of those links. Uh, thank you so much for coming. God bless. Okay, yeah, hopefully uh, it's live on YouTube. So you can just, the link for the uh, meeting, I mean the recording, yeah, it's live on YouTube currently. So you can just check us up on YouTube, uh, TechBridge Consulting. You should be able to have the link or just search job and automation how to start it with it. Blah, 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 the team. I also drop it, we also drop it on the Telegram group. So yeah, if you're on our Telegram group, yeah, you definitely get it there. You get it on the Telegram group. Yeah, thank you so much, everyone. Okay, at this point, I want to say good night to everyone. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for coming. All right. Wow, it's been a great evening.
Okay, bye everyone. Have a very good night. Thank you so much.
Yeah, so we stay here. Um, uh, thank you all for today's lesson. It was quite important. I really enjoyed it. Uh, thank you all for making it a six. I love you to always bring this on. I love you to always bring this on. I love it. I love it so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Toby, you're raising your hand. What can we do for you, Toby? Father Richard's brother. I'm sorry, are you saying Ellis Gray, two-time proper April Award winner, 